And now we turn our attention to the one that we call the nighttime sun. She is our grandmother, our grandmother the moon. And we are grateful to her because she controls the rise and the fall of the waters. She regulates the monthly cycles of all of the female life, thus ensuring the coming of the future generations. She helps us to count time. And she helps us to remember that we should be grateful for this gift of life that we have been given. Grandmother Moon, she is so beautiful that we pile high our most sincere, our most loving thoughts and words of greetings and gratitude and love. And we send that out to her, and now our minds are as one. Deity no olado ne latiwele setonio dunhak ne nguanugunla. Now we think about our grandfathers, the thunder beings, the ones that bring the rain to replenish our water supplies, the ones that bring the rain that bathe and refresh Mother Earth, the ones that bring the rain that helps the plants to grow. We think about the thunder beings, our grandfathers, and how we are so lucky that they come to visit us from time to time. We don't say what a miserable day it is when they come to visit. Instead, we greet them and say, thank you for visiting us and bringing us that gift of life, the water. And we are so grateful to them that we want them to know that we send them our greetings, our gratitude, and our love. And now our minds are as one. Teetino Olado ne Gaeli Nigavolage Etonio Dunhak ne Nguanaguna. We think about the four winds that come from the north, the south, the east, and the west, and how they cool us on a hot summer day, and how they bring the change of weather and the change of climate. And so right now I feel a soft breeze, and it's making me feel good. It's wrapping around me, hugging me. And so I'm grateful and want the winds to know that we send our hellos and our gratitude and our love, and now our minds are as one. Teetino Olado ne Gaeli Ningwedege, Etonio Dunhak ne Nguanagunla. And now we think about the four spiritual messengers that come to us from time to time. Because we as the human beings, as the, as the ungwe ungwe, sometimes we forget who we are. We forget what our responsibilities are. We forget why we're here, that we're supposed to be the caretakers of the natural world, not the user-uppers. We're supposed to take what we need from the natural world, but only what we need, and leave the rest for the future generations to enjoy. We're supposed to remember to say thank you each day for all of the gifts that we have been given. And that reminds us not to waste them, not to take them for granted. And so to the four spiritual messengers who visit us and remind us of those things, because sometimes we forget and sometimes we lose our way, we are so grateful to them. So we send to them our hellos our thank yous and our love, and now our minds are as one. Don Chidawat Nun Ulado ne Songwe Ediso, Etonio Dunhak ne Ngwenagunla. And so now at this point, I'm thinking about the one who some call the great mystery, some call the creator, some say God. There's so many different names. We say it's the one that made us, the one that made us and gave us life, and gave us all of the gifts that we need to enjoy this life. We have been given everything that we need, so we don't need to ask for anything. All we need is the wisdom to use those gifts wisely. We want the Creator to know that we appreciate that gift of life and all of the gifts that sustain us. And so we, He has asked nothing of us in return, he's given us this great gift, but all he's asked is that we say thank you each day, 
and that we only use what we need to use. And so to the Creator, again, we imagine that great blanket spread out between us. And we pile high, layer upon layer upon layer on that blanket, our most beautiful, our most sincere, our most loving words of hello, thank you, and I love you. And we grab the edges of that blanket and toss those greetings to every part of the universe so the Creator will know that we appreciate that love, that gift, that gift of love. And now our minds are as one. And so at this point, the speaker says, I'm only a human being, and so I'm not perfect. If I've forgotten anything or anyone, it was not intentional. Please feel free to fix it in your own way, in your hearts. And now our minds are as one. That was Kay Olin. Let's have another round of applause for her presentation. It was the traditional Mohawk giving of thanks address, or Thanksgiving address. And this is the teaching that Thanksgiving, or giving thanks and being grateful, comes before all else. So be aware of that teaching and let it sink into you. Because there's going to be a lot of teachings today, kind of a... Uh, what they used to call, around the turn of the century, a Chautauqua, where people would get together in a circle or, and they would teach each other and they'd have speakers like William Jennings Bryant and musicians and even theater troops entertain and educate each other out in the middle of nowhere. And then it became popular in the Midwest and Iowa and Kansas, spread all over the country until 1930, until the Great Depression. But it picked up in Sweden and then uh, Pete Seeger and a friend of his, Tony Smith, brought it back from Sweden. And here what we're having is a kind of a Chautauqua. We're teaching each other. We're having musicians. And in fact, I asked Chief Edwards, Chief Jake Edwards of the Onondaga, who will be arriving later, about this word. I said, do you have a word like this in Onondaga? He said, yeah, we pronounce it Swatakwa. It means you are talking and you're saying truthful things. So uh, it's actually interesting that by accident, this Onondaga initiative, the Tura Wampum campaign, has brought the Chautauqua back to America and back to New York, where it started in Chautauqua County by Chautauqua Lake, which is their word. Now, our next performer is Rainbow Weaver. She's going to give a blessing and songs. Just have Ladies and gentlemen, Rainbow Weaver. Good morning, everyone. Is it morning? It's morning for me. <laughs> what time is it? I'm usually getting up about now. Um, I'd like to just say a little prayer and thank Kay Olin for her beautiful Thanksgiving address. I want to be like her. And uh, if you notice, while she was talking about the winged ones, a whole group of them came by. And you see, we still have a whole group of them. They're wondering what the <laughs> they're wondering what the two-leggeds are doing out here. Well, they'll they're here to celebrate with us. We'd like to say a good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. You see up here, there is a dream catcher. I built this dream catcher uh, while I've been staying in the, in the rehab uh, for, my, for my leg. I got a new leg to stand on. Thank you very much. And while I was there, I built this dream catcher. 
And if you can get a close look at it, it's, it's the waters and the sky. And in the waters, you'll see that there are fish. And I named this dream catcher Joy to the World because it reminded me of that song. Joy to the world, all the boys and girls. Joy to the fishes in the deep blue sea. Joy to you and me. <laughs> it's a great day to be joyful. I'd like to share with you a little welcome song. Our two row people are here. Floyd, do you have a welcome song? Yeah, we'll. Hey, I was the on the Wagane. Need to send a little son around for the Napi Nation. How you doing? We're here to welcome the two row wampums, uh, Ramapo people, ancestors. Uh, some of them are Haudenosaunee people, and Tuscarora, some Cayugas went up there. But we're Muncie Lenapes, and I'm going to sing our welcoming song. It's, uh, it says, Patamas say on this chick. It means thank you, God, and for every day. Thank you. 
I trust today that we all carry a song of joy, a song of peace, a song of unity, a song of friendship in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits. For our ancestors that we don't see are also here with us today. And some of your ancestors are also here with us today. And they are very happy that we have come together in unity and working together to heal ourselves, to help Mother Earth so that she can continue to grow our children into beautiful, caring, respectful adults so that they may help heal the earth and themselves for the next generation to come. We always think seven generations ahead. So things that you do today will ripple down the river of life to the next seven generations. The next seven generations of our paddlers, the next seven generations who will carry on our traditions and our ways of life and carry on the gratitude. We need more gratitude for Mother Earth. And if you have a moment today, or if you have a moment right now, I'd like you to just put your hands upon Mother Earth. And just feel her energy. Feel her love. Feel her light. Feel her strength. Because no matter what we do as children in the web of life, cannot put her, cannot destroy her. She always comes back and continues to give us life. She is our mother. So I'd like to share this song for our mother, the earth. I can feel your heart beat. I can feel your heart beat. I can feel your heart beat, heart beat. I can feel your heart beat. I can feel your heart beat. I can feel your heart beat, heart beat. Mother, mother earth, earth. my heart beat you are my heart beat you are my heart beat heart beat you are my heart beat you are my heart beat you are my heart beat heart beat mother mother I am your heartbeat, I am your heartbeat, heartbeat. I am your heartbeat, I am your heartbeat, I am your heartbeat, heartbeat. I can feel your heart beat. 
heartbeat, I can feel your heartbeat, I can feel your heartbeat, heartbeat. I can feel your heartbeat, I can feel your heartbeat, I can feel your heartbeat, heartbeat. Mother, Mother Earth, Earth. Mother, Mother Earth, Earth. Mother, Mother Earth, Earth. Mother, Mother Earth, Earth. We have many winged ones coming in to share this day with us. Thank you very much. Yay! Daneho, Nyawe. Nyawe Goa. Have a wonderful day. And make sure you get lots of really good food. And be sure you buy a lots of really beautiful beadwork and leather work and take a look around at everybody that's showing their crafts because their spirit is also in their crafts and and they will live on forever. We just had to leave them here with a song, the Iroquois song, is that right? Yeah. yeah. You want to yeah. Which one? Uh, Sonogi Ha, Rock Hill, uh, yeah, Rock Hill. Okay. Yeah, We're just going to leave you with this song from Little Sun and Roland. Okay, we're still doing a quick one here. Sonogi Ha is an old traditional social dance song, Haudenosaunee Longhouse song. Hey, oh, hey, hey, oh. Let's have another round of applause for Rainbow. He's the best. Hello, okay. So, thanks for being here. Thanks for coming. Hope you're having a good time. The weather's going to be great. It already is great. It's all a matter of attitude. Now, the next uh, person that I'm going to introduce you to, among my many friends here, Susan Deercloud, 
and I'll read your her bio because it's interesting, and you may have heard of her if you follow, uh, if you're literary at all, you know Susan Deercloud's name. It's like resonating name in poetry. Uh, mixed lineage mountain, Mohawk Blackfo Blackfoot from the Catskill area, uh, alumni of Binghamton University, Goddard College, recipient of National Endowment for the Arts Literature Fellowship, two New York State Foundations for the Arts Poetry Fellowships, Elizabeth George Foundation, Shenango County Council, and ha she has been published in very many literary journals, and her most recent books are Fox Mountain, Braiding Starlight. I got, you gotta really hear these titles. Fox Mountain, Braiding Starlight, Car Stealer, and The Last Ceremony. I gotta say, I own Car Stealer and Last Ceremony, and I treasure those volumes, they're very good. Uh, she serves as an editor of Native Anthology, I Was Indian Before Being Indian Was Cool, and a rematriation, no, matriation chapbook series of indigenous poetry from Foothills Publishing. So uh, Susan Deercloud is going to read a poem, and I'll do a little flute. Here's Susan. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody, for being here today. I'm going to read um, my introduction to the first volume uh, of um, I Was Indian Before Being uh, Indian Was Cool. Uh, this is one of my dreams, uh, what people call a dream come true, to be able to do native anthologies. And um, I, when I was listening to the Thanksgiving earlier, I was feeling very thankful for being 62 years old and making a full circle back uh, to the place I grew up in, which is Livingston Manor in the Catskill Mountains. Very important to me. So this poem is about how I and other Native people grew up in the Catskills. And uh, this is for all those people I knew in the past, some gone now. Uh, but still living in my heart, and for all those people who are still here. And uh, thank you also, Evan, and for my friends who came with me today. I was Indian. <laughs> then all Indians lived in country. <laughs> my people in Catskills where Indians were part Indian. Families extended, including boy cousins too numerous to count. <laughs> including wolf-eyed friends, also part Indian. All Indian kids flung rocks, burrs, snakes at non-Indian kids. Dumb, <laughs> dumb enough to wander onto Indian territory. In my case, School Street. No white girls dared wear a snake necklace the way an Indian girl dared to. Every Indian child got savaged by teachers teaching Indians are savages. Little Indian rebels with a cause got low grades if they spoke up against so-called founding fathers who stole Indian land, made Mother Earth their whipping girl. All the budding warriors' mothers warned them not to tell outsiders their dreams, beautiful ways, lest they be caged as crazy. Long time ago when all Indians went berry picking, strawberries in June, blackberries in July, Blueberries in August, beech nuts and apples in fall, boys, men, hunting, fishing, wild meat for every meal, 
joking. You are what you eat. All our wild boys' tongues tasting of fried trout, plump berries, hard cider. The way third cousins taste it when we barter kisses in high mountain meadows. <laughs> Sounds just like those kisses. When kisses held forth shadows of panthers, passenger pigeons, oh my lost wild heart. and continuing genocide, the ones who tried to shame us. <laughs> Called us dirty, dumb, our untamed tenderness suspect. When all our mothers led us to the rivers of summer, when our small bodies wept into the waters under mountain laurel slopes, when we let our salt grief wash out 